Welcome to the New England Journal of Medicine at the annual meeting of the European Society of Cardiology. I'm Stephen Morrissey, Executive Managing Editor, and I'm talking with Deputy Editor Jane Leopold and Editor-in-Chief Eric Rubin. We're looking at the Notion 3 trial, PCI in patients undergoing transcatheter aortic valve implantation. Jane, why is this an important question to ask? Well, aortic stenosis and coronary artery disease actually share a common etiology. They have common risk factors, and they actually have a common clinical presentation. And we know that coronary artery disease is present in about 50% of all patients undergoing TAVI, and about 10 to 20% of patients actually have TAVI and a PCI. So the issue that comes up is that sometimes when a patient's being worked up for TAVI, there's an incidental finding of coronary artery disease. And we're not really sure whether or not in all comers, whether we should be performing PCI or not before the TAVI or at the same time as the TAVI. Eric, who was enrolled in the trial and what did the investigators find? The participants in this trial had to meet criteria for severe aortic stenosis and have at least one coronary stenosis, which they defined as physiologically significant. They were randomized to either undergo TAVI alone or together with simultaneous PCI of the stenotic lesion or lesions. The primary endpoint was a composite of all-cause mortality, MI, and urgent revascularization. There were more than 450 patients who were included. After a median follow-up of two years, 26% of patients in the PCI group and 36% in the TAVI alone group reached the primary endpoint, a statistically significant difference. Thus, PCI at the time of TAVI resulted in a lower rate of the composite outcome than TAVI without PCI in this population. Jane, how did this strategy of forming PCI with TAVI improve outcomes, and were there any associated risks? Yeah, that's a great question. So in the group where PCI was performed with TAVI, there was a reduction in myocardial infarction, a reduction in urgent revascularization, and any revascularization for that matter. And that really, all those things occurred more frequently in the TAVI only group. And as expected, performing the PCI at the time of TAVI didn't come without some risks associated with it. So for example, if PCI was performed concomitant with TAVI, then the procedure duration was longer, there was more fluoroscopy time, there was more contrast used, and patients in the PCI group had a higher incidence of any minor or major life-threatening or disabling bleeding. And this may have occurred due to the longer procedure or procedures that occurred together. However, the majority of the bleeding that was seen really was minor. So why this occurred is not ultimately clear. Jane, you're an interventionalist, and I know that you like to have a catheter in a patient. Once it's in there, do you think you should just be in there fixing what needs to be fixed? Well, there's always risks associated with performing PCI. And so there are certain times when you should fix everything. And we know that from trials looking at STEMI or ST segment elevation MI, but this does not necessarily translate to fixing everything in a patient who's undergoing TAVI. So that question will need to be answered in a different kind of study. Thank you, Jane. And thank you, Eric. This study was just published at NEJM.org.